Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at how to create texture scrapbook papers for sale on sites such as Etsy. If you've done your research about sites like Etsy and selling scrapbook paper, you will already know that you need a file that is 3600 by 3600 pixels in dimension because that prints at 12 by 12 at 300 dpi. So you want to be designing the kind of paper that people want to buy. So I'm typing in here 3600 by 3600. I'm typing in my resolution at 300 pixels per inch. I'm going to start with a transparent background. That's just fine. And I'm choosing RGB color because typically people want RGB color. That's how these documents are provided for sale. So I've just created my document. I'm just resetting my screen so it looks like the way I want it to look. So where can you start with digital textures? Well, I'm going to start on the web and I'm going to a site called unsplash.com because on unsplash.com you can download texture files. Now, there are some restrictions on use of this. You can download and use these files for free for commercial and non-commercial purposes. You don't need permission, although attribution is appreciated. What's not permitted, and this is important, is that you can't sell the photos without significant modification. So this is going to affect us. We can't sell these images as scrapbook paper unless we significantly modify them. So we need to make them basically unrecognizable. So here on unsplash.com, you're going to find a lot of textures that you can use. Just want to watch that. Unsplash.com, I think, is currently owned by iStock. So you'll find that the top images up here are for fee images. You have to pay for them. The bottom images down here are the standard unsplash.com ones. So I've already downloaded this one. I really liked it. I've downloaded... This one here or something similar to it anyway, and something in a sort of blue pattern. I also downloaded something similar to this. So we're going to see how we would put these together into some scrapbook paper. So let's just go and download a couple. I think I'll grab this one as well. Kind of like this one. Let's see what else. This is a really nice one too. I think that we could make some use of this texture detail. So I've now downloaded all these images. I'm just going to move my screen across a little bit because if I come down here and choose show in folder, I can just grab the image and drop it into my screen. You know, this is another one. So we'll just press enter once it's in the document. I'm going to drop three images in for now. You can always go back to your browser and just locate it here in the browser window. Here I'll take this dark one as well. So I've got three images here in my file. Now they're all a lot smaller in terms of their width and taller in terms of their height that I actually need. So what I'm going to do is position them in the document and either stretch them to fit, which doesn't matter because they're texture images, or I'm going to size them and position them where I want them to be. So again, with this one, I don't want the flowers across the bottom, so I'm just going to grab the more interesting content. And this one, I'm not going to skew it out of alignment because those objects there in the middle really are square so I'd like them to be usable. I'm going to move them to the top because I'm going to use them to texture everything else and I'll turn on my other images. So let's have a look at these two images, the cream one and this one here. I'd like them to interact with each other so let's go down the blend modes here to see if we can get any interesting results. So this is typically what I'll do is I'll allocate an hour or two to just play around and just see what I find. I really like this. So having found something I really like, I'm going to see if I can just dial down those colors a little bit. It seemed like it was possibly a little bit bright. So I'm really liking this. Let's turn on our text or our sort of graphic element, something that's barely recognizable but sort of recognizable. I'm going to use multiply with this because multiply will just blend it into the layers underneath. 
but I can see that it's pretty grayscale, so I may want to make it a little bit more black and white. So I'm going to add an adjustment layer with Layer, New Adjustment Layer, and I'm going to choose Curves. So firstly, I want to make sure that this curve adjustment is affecting only the layer underneath. Now, when I hover over this icon right now, it's telling me that the adjustment is affecting every layer below. So it's affecting all those texture layers as well as this one that's got these sort of visible elements on it. Well, I don't want that to be the case. I just want to be affecting the layer immediately below. So I want my adjustment layer to affect this layer only. And you can see that it is now because it's got this little bent arrow. So let's go back to our adjustment layer. And now the changes that we're making are going to affect this layer only. And what I can do is try and remove some of that gray there. So I'm just brightening this up a little bit. I'm increasing the contrast. Anytime that you adjust this curve so it's steeper in the middle, then you're going to be adding contrast. So essentially what I'm doing is making the darker colors darker and the lighter colors lighter. So the lighter colors were gray, so they're becoming more white. The darker colors were that black, and so they're becoming more black. So I'm really liking this effect, but I think this layer here is a little bit too intense. It's showing up a little bit too much. So I'm just going to drop its opacity down so it has less effect on the document. I like to take the opacity all away and then just bring it up gradually so I can see what effect it's having in the document. And when I get to a point where I kind of like it, then that's when I'm going to stop. So at this point, we have what I would call one sheet of usable scrapbook paper. It is 3600 by 3600 pixels in size. It is 300 DPI. It is perfect for use as scrapbook paper. What I would be looking at next is what can I do to this to make more sheets of scrapbook paper from just this particular document? Well, there are a couple of things that I can do. Firstly, I would save this so I don't lose it. So I might call this sort of my master document, but let's assume that I've done that. What I'm going to do is start putting in adjustment layers. So I'll go to layer, new adjustment layer, and I'll make it hue saturation. And it's going on top of everything. So it's going to affect absolutely everything. I could also just drop it down so it affected only the bottom two layers because this, of course, is that text layer doesn't really matter in this circumstance. Well, it does matter because it would either affect the text or not. But, you know, these are texture documents. All we're looking at or looking for is something interesting, basically. So let's start moving the colors around. I really like that. But I think the black is a bit black. So let's go back to the layers. And this time, let's drag it, the adjustment layer, above everything. Well, it's not really affecting I don't think that black very much. But let's just go with that for now. Because this hue saturation adjustment layer is above everything and it doesn't have this little bent arrow on it, it is affecting all the layers underneath. And that's what I want it to. I want it to take all the colors in that document, which were reds and golds, and take them somewhere else on the color wheel, in this case to purples and blues. Now I can take it somewhere else. Let's just see what else we could get out of here. Well, we could get it into purples and blues a bit. We can take it into greens and oranges. That's really attractive. We could take it into turquoise and green. So there's some mileage in just dragging these hue sliders around and seeing what we get. We're not using color eyes because we want this image to color in different areas very differently. So we want this, or I want this separation between these sort of what were ready brown colors now to be colored green where the rest of the document is going more into the cyans. So from here, I would have the potential of creating a number of sheets of scrapbook paper. One of the other things that I would really like to look at is what if I take this text and make it white instead of black? So I'm just going to turn off that layer because that layer was working just fine. Let's go and make a duplicate of it. Let's move it above everything. The curves adjustment is now affecting everything underneath. That hue saturation is affecting everything underneath. Let's put our text on top. It's in multiply blend mode, but this time I'm going to take it to screen because screen would be a lightning blend mode. 
but it's really dark. So what I'm going to do is to invert it. So with this layer selected, I'm just going to choose Image, Adjustments, and I'll choose Invert. So what that's done is it's turned my what was black text into white text and now it's screen blended into everything underneath. Let's just turn it off and turn it on again. I'm just not seeing that text very clearly but it might be more clear if I take it up to 100% opacity. It sort of is but it's not perfect. So let's just go and see if we can find anything else that would work here. So I'm just going to go through my blend modes and see if I can see anything that would work. Hard light is a really hard blend mode to use. So although I really like the fact that I can see my white elements here, I'm reluctant to use it because of what it does to the rest of the document. But vivid light or linear light, yep, they might work. Mm, seeing some really interesting stuff here. I really, really like that. So what I'm doing at this stage really is just poking around. I don't really have an agenda. I just want to make some scrapbook papers. I want to make some things that look interesting. And so I'm going to play with things like blend modes and adjustment layers. Adjustment layers that might affect just one layer or might affect lots of layers. The key adjustment layers I'm going to be using are things like hue saturation because that will change the color of things. I'll use curves because that allows me to make things that are more contrasty. Pretty much those are the kind of adjustment layers that I would use, but there's one more that I might use, and that is this one layer, new adjustment layer. I'm going to gradient map. Gradient map allows me to apply a gradient to an image, so the darker areas in the image will be colored one way, and the lighter areas in the image will be colored a different way. Let's go and see if we can get something happening here with some pinks. Okay, we don't have a lot of gradations inside the image that we don't have a lot of difference between darks and lights that are being reflected here. But you know, this is a really interesting effect. If we wanted to create a set of subtle scrapbook papers that had subtle textures in them, we could use this as a starting point, a purplish sort of gradient map. If we like that, let's go back to this document and say, okay, so that's one of our scrapbook papers. Let's add another hue saturation adjustment layer on top of everything. And now we have the ability to turn this into blue paper or green paper or pink paper or yellow, orange. So some of these colors are going to work really well. Some of these colors won't work very well at all. But we've taken three texture photos, we've put them together, and then we're just beating them around with a whole set of adjustment layers and effects that are very, very simple to apply to see what we can get. And so we could end up out of this with some scrapbook paper that is extremely colorful, but just by adding a gradient map and then recoloring it, we get these really subtle designs. So this is all from one little play around, if you like. I would imagine in the 15 minutes that I've been doing this, I've got the basis of a couple of sets of scrapbook paper just sitting here ready to go. Of course, then we come up with the situation of how do we save these? Well, you're going to put each sheet of paper up on the screen. So say we want to save this one. I'm going to use file and then save as. You might need to use save a copy if you can't save as JPEGs using your save as option. If you want to see how to do that, I have a video on that and I'll link it in the description below. But I can save as. So let me go to my computer. I'm in my YouTube working images. That'll be perfect for this. And let's just go to JPEG format. I'm going to call this texture one. It'll be a JPEG file. I'm going to embed the ICC profile sRGB in it. So it will be saved in the sRGB profile file. I'll click save. I'm going to save it as a high resolution because it needs to be high resolution. Everybody who's selling on Etsy is selling high resolution scrapbook paper. I'll click OK. As I save each of these individual papers, I'll be checking to make sure that they're actually being saved in the correct format. Here's my texture one. You can see that it's 3600 by 3600 pixels. It's 24 megabytes because it is high resolution. I'm going to right click it and choose properties because I just want to double check to make sure that 
it is saved at 300 dpi. Here it is, 300 dpi. So the settings that I'm using, the document that I've created is saving for me those exact right size documents that I need for selling on a site like Etsy. I hope this video has given you food for thought in terms of using free to download texture photos, combining them and just blending them and adding a few adjustment layers to create something that is unique and really attractive in terms of scrapbook paper that is saleable. Before we finish up, I have more Photoshop training at Skillshare.com. When you sign up for Skillshare, you'll get access to thousands of classes there, including over 250 of mine. In the description below is a Skillshare coupon for you, which is at least as good as the current Skillshare offer, and typically mine will be better. Please feel free to share this coupon with family, friends, and co-workers. I hope you've enjoyed this video and learned things about Photoshop of which you were previously unaware. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and that notification bell and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. Until next time, my name's Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.